Hello, it's Sean with the Rambling Loafers, and I'm gonna do something a little different than us going around checking out the town. You know, rambling lets us do a lot of different things, so we can be the Rambling Loafers and, well, do something different, as the case may be. Um, today, I'm gonna be unboxing a birthday gift for the other rambling loafer, which is Amanda. And it's this. I know, you're looking at the tape going, what? Of course, if you looked at the title for the video, then you've probably already figured out that it is a Koa bodied ukulele. But I have to put it together. <laughs> so I'm pretty good with woodwork. And I have been tinkering with old guitars figuring out how to make them better, doing the, what they call the setup, um, setting the, you know, the action on the, the, the string action so that they're the right heights from the frets so that they don't buzz and so that you don't have to push them for, you know, three kilometers before you get it, get a note out of it. So anyway, um, if anybody here is thinking of getting into luthery, get junk guitars and, and learn on it. Because I have mistakes in my shop that will never ever be playable, um, but I learned a ton through that process. So I didn't jump into this thinking I am an expert. I'm jumping into this hoping that uh, I can make something that's pretty nice, looks good and sounds good. And it's starting out with some very high quality materials. So this came from Solo Guitars. I'm gonna lift the lid off it. Just one camera today. Well, that's usually the case. I don't have a helper holding another camera, so I'll have to hold things up. And here is the bottom, or the back I should say. And that's Koa body. Now this is a soprano ukulele, so everything's kind of smallish. And that is what Amanda wanted for her birthday. On the back, I have a couple of braces uh, taped on there. And I have some index lines that'll show me where to place the braces, which will be pretty nice. Okay. Uh, it was extremely well wrapped. I could shake the, the package and Nothing was rattling or moving around in there at all. All right, so here is the top, and this is the inside of it. Um, the lines for the braces, and I've got a couple of braces here. And then this part here is gonna go, this goes under the bridge, and that'll be some support. And then these little plastic deals, little black and white strips, I'm not sure I'm showing it really good. That is for the inlay or the, uh, the rosette. Now the front of it looks really pretty. That isn't that such a nice pattern? I'm not sure what this mark is, if that's just part of the sap process or something, but I, it adds a lot of really neat dimension to it because it's different from the rest of it. So we have the, the dark grain going down the middle and we see this quite often with, with guitars and ukuleles, you know, they they, they, they go for some symmetry and then you've got this part here that's just a little bit different so that gives it a really neat bit of character and I'm hoping that that's something that comes out when it's finished here we've got it routed around the sound hole and that's where the inlay which is these little plastic strips and there's a little piece of there's a wooden strip in there too the instructions I'm sure will tell me what everything does and how to put it together I'm just going to take my time and I have less than a month before Amanda's birthday. Uh, she might get pictures of this in process. But then again, I might have the whole thing finished. I don't know. Okay. All right. So good packing stuff all around. We have some hardware and this has all the frets and it looks like the frets are cut to the proper width of the, the fretboard as, as, as far as where they're placed. I have some strings, they're just white strings, I'm not sure what brand they are. Um, and the tuners, 
I don't know if they're the friction tuners or if they're the, the fancy orbitals. Um, don't tell my dentist I did that. He'd probably be. You always think that the dentist would be upset when he sees you doing that. They're not. It's money to them, right? Oh, look at that, another, another tooth fixing job. I'll fix that guy's teeth. All right, so try not to make anything worse by pulling it out. Right, so in here we have, let me see, let me, let me show you what I'm doing, right? What's the hardest part about this whole business is remembering to share what I'm doing with the camera. All right, so looks like the first thing I'm getting my hands on is the saddle, and it looks to me, well, it's, it's got some shapes in it, so it's, it looks to me like it's a compensated saddle. And that's all for the intonation and such. Okay. Now, the more I look at these, the more I don't think they are those fancy orbital tuners. Looks like they're just some friction tuners, which is fine um, for something like this. I, and I might be wrong, I, they might be the fancy kind. But it doesn't look to me like there's a planetary gear set inside there. But that's fine. These things work pretty good. Okay. And here are the strings. And I'm pretty good at figuring out what string is what when I'm stringing it, but before then I, I couldn't sit there say I, I couldn't there sit there and tell you this is the G and this is the C. So the C string is pretty obvious. So yeah, it feels like just a normal friction tuner. Um, if your friction tuners are loose in tune, you just tighten the bottom of the end screw and that'll tighten them up a bit. Nothing comes out easy. This is a nice little piece of wood. It um, looks like rosewood. This is the bridge. And there are these little cuts, these little slots, these little holes in there. And the strings will, will just tie a, a string, a knot in the end of a string, and then hook it in there and then pull it tight. And then the saddle goes in here. I'm not sure what direction it goes. I've never worked with compensated saddles on a ukulele before. All right, and then the nut. And the nut has some really shallow grooves in it. I'm gonna, I don't know if the camera will show that. I'm on fixed focus, so it doesn't move around on me. But there's some light grooves, so I'll have to enhance the grooves I expect for the strings to stay in place. I'm not gonna take the frets out. It's a whole bunch of little pieces of metal. And then, uh, of course, two more tuners. All right, curved linings. These are what goes around the inside of the body of the guitar. So, the of course, the, the ukulele or guitar is curved, and these will bend to the curve. All right, the fat side will go toward the top of the ukulele, so it'll glue in like that, and that adds the strength that it needs. So I've got a couple pieces of that. I've got a couple little short pieces, um, several long pieces. So I need enough for both the front and the back. All right, bubble wrap. We'll save that for later. All right, some of these things. What's this? This looks just like packing stuff. More bubble wrap. I'll keep me busy tonight. All right, so these parts, um, I can't remember what they're called. There are two of them here, stuck together with a rubber band. One goes at the end, and the other goes uh, against the, the, uh, the neck, where the neck attaches, the heel of the neck, I suppose. And actually, you know, when I've looked in guitars before, a lot of times these are just rough cut pieces of wood, but these are actually fairly well finished, which is nice. So you should have a nice finish inside of your 
inside of your guitar. All right, so this bubble wrap with scotch tape. That's kind of strange. The solo guitars, I believe this is a Canadian outfit, so that, that may be a Canadian thing. I don't know. All right. I know you're not watching the video to see me fight with tape, are you? Well, you're gonna watch me fight with tape. Whatever you came here for, fighting with tape is on the agenda. I'm gonna bite it. I'm gonna... Okay. More money for my dentist. Isn't that right? Okay. So these are the sides, and these are preformed. There's two of them, and they'll go together, and you can see the rough dimensions there, and there's some some bending that'll have to happen. I'm going to do it under uh, controlled circumstances and inside. So, oh, here's a cool thing. I didn't notice this before. Look at that. It's thinner here than here, so this is going to be a tapered body. And it indicates which is the top and which is the bottom. So the the bigger part of the of the uh, body of the uke will have a deeper uh, a deeper depth. That's it. I'm eloquence, right? And then uh, the top part will have a less deeper <laughs> less deeper depth. Okay. All right. Enough with eloquence. And here, all right. We get this tape. Uh, this stuff out of there, and I got some blue tape that I use from hanging my green screen. I'm not really at the beach. It just looks like I am. You guys probably figured that out, right? I mean, you can probably hear the air conditioner in the background. Oh, here I am fighting with tape again. See what you signed up for. It's a Canadian plot, that's what it is. The Canadians are trying to confound us with scotch tape. And I started popping bubbles in the bubble wrap. Maybe I should have got some scissors. Oh well. All right. All right, so this has two parts in it. Oh, they are so pretty. And they're rubber banded together for the shipping. So I'll show you the fretboard first. Has the dots on it, so we have dots telling us where one, one, two, three, four, five, right? seven, nine, and eleven. Is that? Yeah, something like that. All right. In addition, it's got the little dots there, so you can, as you're playing, you can look down and see where you are. Right? All right, and then the neck, and I believe the neck is also koa. And my understanding is the koa is uh, Hawaiian acacia. But I don't know how that makes any difference to anything. Yeah, look at that, that's pretty. The, the shapes are even, there's some good symmetry in it. I'm not a professional luthery, luth luthery, luthier. See, here I am with the eloquence again. But I can identify problems with symmetry. Eh. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Well, maybe it is perfect, and I'm not, which is likely. Okay. And then that's where the uh, the dowel pin is, where it'll butt up and this radius here, this curve, should match the curve of the upper bout of the of the ukulele body. And it'll have a real nice fit and 
I learned some things by watching some YouTubes and the guitar fixing YouTubes this was sandpaper to make it fit and look pretty so I'll be trying out those things oh and look at this I didn't notice this and I don't know if it's visible on the on the fretboard or on the video but the grooves on the fretboard are not exposed on the end so they've got a little piece of wood on the end I think there's yeah I can't remember what that's called there's a term for it when they do that but the frets will so I'll have to do a little bit of shape work with the frets so that they uh, come out even but they go in the in the grooves the right way that's cool I still have to get a new tool before I do that all right now we here have we here we have here a handy set of instructions all right gives me the name of the parts we have a string body head pegs nut fingerboard fret position mark sound hole decal it's not a decal I guess it's not I don't know um, there are it looks like 12 pages of instructions with this well third 14 if you count yeah, the covers. Is it? Maybe. Yeah. It's always an even number of pages. Okay. Um, let's see. We have our uh, packing slip. And then solo guitars. Now I've been to their site, of course I have, because that's where I ordered this from. I couldn't have ordered it from there unless I went there. And one of the things I noticed was that they have places for videos and reviews of all their products, but they don't have any. So I'm hoping maybe they'll uh, they'll take this. All right, so anyway, um, Solo wants to thank me for my purchase. And I can download a wiring guide and assembly manual from the website at solo, sologuitars.com. Wiring diagrams. I'm not wiring anything. Um, but presumably, uh, they do a lot of electric guitars. So uh, if you're doing an electric, you need wiring guides, right? So you can get that. They have all this stuff there. Um, sologuitars.com slash support portal if I need help. There's an 800 number, it's toll free. Um, I, can, I can email support at sologuitars.com. So there's some good stuff there. There's a, there's a special code. I'm not gonna show you the code to get $5 or 5% 5 off. That's just for me, because I bought one, right? I already plan to buy a regular guitar kit from these guys after this one's finished. Not before, not a minute before. All right, so I'll be doing more videos of this as I go. Um, I have my shop space nearly set up. I do have another couple of tools I need to get, um, particularly with doing the fret work. I think I have all my clamps, and actually in the dis destructions, destruct instructions, it does indicate using uh, you know wrapping strings and stuff around it to hold it tight. Um, so I, I have clamps, and I have materials. I have I have a lot of the stuff that I need, but I have a few things that I still need to get. Um, we'll go over that. I am uh, not professing to be a professional of any grade on this. I am familiar with woodwork <laughs> enough that I have some confidence with this. Um, I think, though, if you don't have experience with woodwork, um, this might not be something that you should tackle. Uh, unless you know somebody who can help you out and so all right so that's the end of part one uh, part two will be uh, something some part I'm gonna follow the instructions pretty much uh, in sequence so the next thing will be I don't know what's the first step side frame assembling so I'll probably have to uh, build some stuff to get set up. So anyway, 
I will see you then.